We got to knock on the door. I'm like, okay, no one knocks on our door. Come and knock on our door. Uh, open it up, and it's the cops. Oh, no, it's the cops. And I'm like, oh, my God, what happened now? These cops have now been to our apartment multiple times. <laughs> One time because it was uh, a death threat from a Mexican cartel. <laughs> and then now this. Guy's like, hey, did you know that your garage door is open and that your car door is open? And I went, no. The Mazda in the driveway. The Ford is parked uh, in the cul-de-sac visitor spot because our garage is chock full with shit. We took all our stuff out of the storage unit because it was costing us too much. It's now all in the garage. It's all messy. I'm supposed to organize it, and I have no, I don't, I don't even know where to start. So the cop's like, did you leave your garage door open? I was like, I don't think so, no. And he's like, did you leave your car door open? And I was like, I don't, wait, What? Like, I don't remember us leaving the car door open, but but when I had my 10-year reunion for high school, we, we I got so royally effed at that freaking reunion. And my wife was also in a, in a bad headspace because it was like she just had the baby and was kind of like, you know, just in a fog, really. And I had helped, you know, she had come into the door. We, found, we went to sleep that night. I woke up the next morning to go to work. The car door on the passenger side was just wide open. And so I was like, oh, my God, someone broke into the car. And so, you know, I had opened the sliding glass door to see the open car door, run to sm close the car door, curse my wife for not closing the car door, and immediately got in my car to go to the work. Well, by doing that, I had not closed the sliding glass door. And And the cats got out and then it was all hell broke loose. So I was like, there's a possibility that my wife did not close the door because that's just what she does. But I also do it too. The cop was like, you want to come out and take a look? And I was like in my t-shirt and like sweatpants, no, so no socks or shoes. And I just immediately started walking out and he's like, it's a little cold out. You might want to put on some shoes, maybe a jacket, a hat. <laughs> I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how fucking quarantined we are. We don't even know what to do when we go outside anymore. It's like, it's cold out. It was like that scene from Step Brothers where he's just like, do I wash my, can I wash my clothes in the dishwasher? Like, what do I do when it rains outside? You know, I eventually I like bundle up and I, and I go outside and, and he's like, yeah, I mean, it looks like someone has been rummaging through your car. Has any been anything been taken from your garage? And I was like, uh, I don't know. And it was like, we have another car right there. And he's like, yeah, that car door is also open. And it also looks like they've been rummaging through it. Like the glove compartment is open in both cars. The center console is open in both cars. But I'm not allowed to like go in the cars because it's an active crime scene. I think they mentioned at one point that the guy had been caught shortly thereafter somewhere in some other car. The neighbor right next to us had his like Jeep compass stolen and gone for a joyride. They got the car back. But apparently, according to the cop, like this happens all the time. Like they just hit up complexes. That's just like their thing because it's like you can just go and hit up a bunch of cars because they're right close together. If anyone hears a noise, they just assume it's their neighbor. And I was like, uh, yeah, that makes a lot of sense because around midnight-ish, I go up to to bed. My wife's still up. Both her and I are laying in bed and we're like, can't shut our brains off. So we're on our smartphones, you know, lights on. And it's probably around a little before 1230. And we hear the garage door. And my wife was like, Oh, that's weird. And she's like, must be the next door neighbor, meaning like the guy next to us, because he's like, either an in law school or a lawyer or something like that, you know, burning the midnight oil, cashing in, you know, that hourly rate. No, it was our garage door. And like, we just couldn't put two and two together. Like we looked at on this Nanit app, baby monitor app that we have and in her room, in Bree's room, which is right over the garage, it was fucking cold. And we're like, should we turn off the heat? Like it's real cold in her room. And that only happens when our garage door is open. Again, it's just not clicking. It's too late at night. We're burnt out. We're dealing with the baby all day. She was working all day. It's just like your brains are fried. So you're not thinking. But yeah, that's when they hit us between 12 and 1230, which seems a little early to be committing that kind of crime. <laughs> Like not everyone's asleep at that time. You know, maybe they didn't adjust their clock for daylight savings. You know, they didn't fall back or whatever. And the fact that our door, garage door, like the door that leads from our house into the garage was unlocked. So they could have very easily, because they were able to get into our Mazda, the garage door opener is in the Mazda. Boop, click that, garage door opens. They could have come through the garage because there's still a path. It's not like completely unwalkable. And then they could have just entered through that door. But our saving grace is our laziness, or at least my laziness. Because you know, we get a lot of packages. What happens is I open the packages, I take the boxes, and I put them, instead of just taking them and putting them into the recycling in the garage, I just put it by the door in front of the door that leads to the 
garage. So our theory is that they probably might have tried to come in, but they when they opened the door, it hit the boxes and made a little noise, and that, boom, sent them scattering. They're like, now it's making too much noise, they're going to be up. So my laziness actually saved our lives. You're welcome. Nothing is missing from our cars because we don't really keep anything of value. It's just amazing that they broke into both cars and their garage didn't take a thing because we don't have anything. They opened the Mazda and they opened the Ford and they saw a baby seat and all kinds of baby shit. Baby stroller, uh, pack and play. They opened my car, car seat, baby toys. They opened the garage and they just see baby toys and baby shit everywhere. It's like they could have taken our snowblower. <laughs> I don't know what that the street value is on a snowblower, but they could have taken that. And they probably saw how much of a fucking mess it is. So can you imagine, like I got a list of things that I needed to do this week. If I had actually organized the garage, how easy it would have been for them to rip us off and steal shit. The fact that I left it messy was a deterrent. <laughs> See, I do have a, a plan. There's a method to my madness. My sloppiness has now officially kept us safe and kept our things here. Our neighbor's funny though, because she came out when I was kind of just cleaning things up, took out the recycling. Our neighbor, who has a sign in her front lawn that says, we support law enforcement, apparently waited for the cops to leave to come out and get in her car and like pull out. And I was like, hey, what's going on? Like, can, can you believe this shit? It's just insane. It happened all like a little bit after midnight before 1230. And she was like, yeah, I was up at that time and I didn't hear anything. And she has a dog that goes ape. I mean, ham, whenever anyone gets even remotely close to her front door, just nonstop. And it's like, oh, hey, dog, where were you on this? Where were you this time? Where were you this time? Needed you. And you let us down. To finish up the neighbor port, port, that port, she's like, yeah, I just, uh, I couldn't come out here while they were out here. I just know too many of them. And I was like, you, you have a sign that says we support law enforcement in your, I thought you support law enforcement. So I think the theory, at least in my own head, is that she is, she is fond of officers. <laughs> She's lived in this town for a while, I'd say her entire life. And most of the cops are people who have grown up in this town. So I'm thinking there's some history there, <laughs> a little hookup history with her and uh, some officers. Those cops, they like to gab, but still, you can come out and say hi, it's fine. I thought it was funny. She was also wearing sandals and I was like, uh, I can't believe you're wearing sandals right now. It's freezing. I know I just, I know I just tried to exit my house in, in no shoes and a t-shirt, but that's crazy. And she was like, oh, I'm going to pedicure. And I was like, whoa, I never thought about that. Like pedicures in the winter. What the fuck do you do? You ladies, tough sons of bitches. And then the last part, I'll wrap this up. What, what the fuck with these thieves, these carjackers, what, what's happening here? The Mazda has an alarm system. The Ford has an alarm system. And I was like, how did the alarms not go off? when they broke into the cars. The neighbor was like, well, it's because they probably have devices that can disable the alarm system so that they, they, they can crack open the car and get in. And I'm thinking to myself, if they have that technology to crack open a car without the alarm going off, how do they not steal the car? Why wouldn't they steal the car? Is it because they saw like the child seats? I'm, I'm convinced that these are like robbers with hearts of gold. I think it's a robber with a heart of gold. I think a robber comes in and they have a code of ethics. Right. They have their code and they say to themselves, they open shit up and they're like, ah, car seat. We can't do it. Their parents we can't do it. They open up the garage. Ah, yeah, they got the baby's toys. You can't do it. Can't do it. That's one theory. And the other theory is like, if they have a device to crack open the car, why not steal the car? What are you looking for value in the car? Who leaves valuable shit in their car? I guess sunglasses. My mom goes, oh, they're probably looking for money. <laughs> Or drugs. And I was like, all right, second and thirdly and fourthly of all, who the hell is put just has drugs in their car? Recipe for disaster. Who knows? Who knows what they wanted? Maybe they were sending us a sign, but for the record now, Mexican cartel death threat, severed rabbit head on porch, break and attempt. This area, very interesting. This complex is just like teeming with possibilities of crime. Meanwhile, we we invited crime to our house in Wayne. Left the car door open to the Mazda all night, one night. Left the barn door to the basement and the basement door open for like two days in a row. We just left everything open and no one would come in. No one would do anything because it's the burbs, I guess. And it's like people, people are more like you can't just walk, randomly walk into from house to house trying to rob shit unless it's like a home alone situation where it's like, you do you do your prep work, dress up like a cop, and uh, ask the family, hey, got any plans for the holidays? 
I'm sure there are like two years, three years down the road. We'll be like, hey, where's the um, where's the plunger? <laughs> like, it's just like something random will have been taken. It's almost like the John Mulaney bit from his stand up comedy act where he's like, we went to a party as teens. This one kid confessed to me that he would take a picture from a bedroom of each house party that he went to. Because, because it's the one thing you can't replace. <laughs> Tell Maloon season, lock your doors, hide your kids, hide your wife.